uh, to fun, fund uh, residences also. But the last thought I'll leave with you is the beneficial cycle of Islamic finance for the, the Muslim community. Before our banks started, the only alternative that a Muslim had for their funds that were not risk capital, but capital they needed for uh, uh, their uh, future needs uh, that they needed to have in a relatively safe place, was to put it in a bank, a non-interest-bearing account. They had no profit. They had no interest. Uh, they had no uh, Sharia problem, but they had no profit. Uh, when we offered our uh, Madaraba profit sharing accounts, now the community can, off, can invest their funds, make a profit, have an increase. So when a customer comes to us and, and makes the decision, some of many actually make the decision between conventional finance to buy a home or office building or such, or Islamic uh, product, they have to uh, think about, I think, the implications of their action, not just for themselves, but for the community. Because if they come to us and get the Islamic Ijara contract, that in turn allows, allows us the opportunity to give the Muslim Ummah, the members of the Muslim community in the United States, an opportunity to invest their money, not for no profit or no increase, but for a profit, if there is a profit from their investment in the Madaraba contract. Whereas if they get their financing for their house or their building uh, conventionally, there can be no profit to the members of the community, which includes uh, you know, students, widows, people who need to have a safe place for their investment, but also would like to have an increase from profit on their investment. So there truly is, and we see this, a beneficial cycle of, of reinvestment back into the community from people coming to our bank. Thank you very much. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So I'll just walk you through briefly what our firm has been doing in terms of reaching out to the retail needs of the uh, Muslim community. Uh, in 2004, when, uh, when our group tried to look at the Islamic finance market, uh, we had examples in the U.S. of Guidance Financial and University Bank growing and providing uh, Sharia-compliant financing solutions to the community in the U.S. that was rel relatively competitive to the uh, conventional side. So here in Canada, we created a business model. We had some of the models that were successful in the U.S. and U.K. And we went to about 70 institutions um, here, here largely in Toronto. The banks weren't too receptive since there was no real track record. Uh, within our own Muslim community, we've had small co-ops that have been providing solutions since 1979. But the main challenge was since these uh, co-ops were limited in funds, uh, the pricing was also an issue with them. Working spe uh, specifically with the credit unions, uh, we spent about two years with them designing a product that would meet uh, their criteria and also our Sharia scholars' criteria. So we, we, in 2005, we secured a funding line into our company that was structured on a modarba basis, so the, the, the profit would be shared. Going forward, this, uh, the demand for the community kept increasing, and we structured further funding lines from the credit union. <clears throat> In the end, uh, we were able to provide home financing that was competitive to the community, which quickly grew to about 120 million. On the mortgage side, that was one solution that we had provided. And now working again with the credit union system, we were able to uh, design a deposit product that would also meet uh, the community's need, and we structured a Sharia-compliant term deposit on that basis. Uh, so just going over summary in terms of some of the products that we have created for the Muslim community is that we've also launched a MasterCard. We have an investment fund. We also have a real estate division, so since we're doing Sharia compliant financing, in, in terms of cases of default or delinquency, our real estate company comes into play and provides a solution. And at the same time, uh, in terms of capital markets, we have some products that we structured on that basis. So this is where, in a nutshell, we've been trying to push forward the needs of the, the Canadian Muslim community. The Canadian Muslim community right now numbers about one million, is roughly 3% of the Canadian uh, population. 70% um, of Canadians have mortgages, they have investment portfolios. Portfolios. So our business model has always been that we partner with conventional institutions to try to meet the demand of the, of the community. 
So we have uh, the, the Muslim community is a community again uh, here in Canada, which is doubling uh, almost every 10 years. So it's a growing market set, and uh, looking at models that have been structured internationally, we're trying to duplicate them to meet the demand of the uh, the Canadian Muslim community here. So this is where, uh, especially with Linda Jeffrey at Central, they, they've been beneficial in terms of structuring this first Mudaraba funding line that has been a, a groundbreaking mechanism to dr to try to grow the funding facility here in Canada. Unfortunately, in Canada, we don't have have a Freddie Mac equivalent that has funded various banks in the U.S., so we had to use various other Treasury departments in terms of getting our funding line. Thank you, Omar. Thank you. Um, my name is Linda Jeffrey, and I've been working with Omar, as Omar had uh, said, since 2004. Uh, we're primarily, Central One is primarily a wholesale financial institution, which is a little bit different from a retail organization, which, which, which is what most credit unions are. So we started this program at the wholesale level. We provided UMF an opportunity to fund residential mortgages through the, through the line that, that we were providing to them. What our intent was, was really to move this product down into the credit union system. The credit union system is unique. They're always interested in being niche players. The credit unions have always been interested in forming new types of products, new relationships in the areas that banks tend not to venture into. And we've had the luxury of banks, as, as Omar pointed out, not, not venturing into this area in any big way. Unfortunately, though, we've had some um, financial reasons why the credit unions have chosen to remain on the conservative side of their lending, and that affected most financial institutions globally over the last few years, which has uh, not enabled the, the development of this product. However, we're moving away from that, that crisis period and we're, and we're more optimistic. We have credit unions who are starting to show an interest at the retail level, which is where this product truly belongs. We're um, hoping within the scope of, of uh, cooperation, we heard the, the word used uh, a few times this morning, that credit unions can actually form, um, form relationships with organizations like OMAR's UMF and provide this product to credit unions. When we were um, actually working on this product, what OMAR really needed was a funding line, was a funding source. And he benefited from some of the uh, programs that, that Central was operating, and one of them was in the securitization area. And it was unfortunate that the whole securitization market shut down in, in August of 2007, because prior to that, we had worked with the rating agencies here in Toronto, and the rating agencies um, understood what the, what the product looked like. They um, felt that the product could fit into their traditional securitization conduits, which was a, a really big step. We've worked um, also with Omar and, and some of his other colleagues um, in, in getting some of the public insurers to look at this product. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, Omar, if, if uh, you, you, you plan to speak to uh, your relationships with those private insurers, but that is a big step forward in recognizing these products and ensuring that they, be, they fall into the mainstream of, of providing um, Muslim communities with residential mortgages. I'm here to answer any of your questions because I know quite often people ask, well, how did you wrap your mind around um, the product? Um, there are legal implications. How did you develop a, a comfort level with, with the change in the contracts? And we seem to have overcome all those things at Central. We're encouraging our credit unions to look at this product with an open mind and, and really um, take advantage of having this growing community available to them. Credit unions are very good at their relationships, at forming those relationships with, within their communities, and we look at that as a very positive um, place for, for these products. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And lastly, we're gonna have Saad. Um, I didn't know he'd be presenting until I saw his name on the marketing material, but I'm glad to see that his knowledge is surpassing mine. Well, I'm just going to make it brief and short, so that I think I give a pretty good introduction. Uh, my name is Saad. I work for uh, Scotia McLeod, which is a division, a wealth management division of uh, Scotia Capital. What I really wanted to think there are enough uh, uh, experts out here in this room who are far more knowledgeable in the product structuring side, but I'm just going to speak mostly on the retail challenges and why, I, I guess, maybe give some insight from the from the perspective of the big five banks as to why they haven't really moved into in this area, especially in the Canadian uh, 
retail space. I think one of the challenges uh, that was emphasized earlier on as well is, is there's not enough knowledge out there. So a lot of the Muslim community itself does not understand why a product is, is why is it a mortgage, why is it a murabaha, how is it different than a conventional mortgage.